I love wooden gears. In the past couple of years, I've used all kinds of wooden gears in my projects, and I've done a few videos on how to make wooden gears and different ways you can do it. Today, I want to show you the easiest possible way I can think of. Today, I'm going to show you how to make really simple wooden gears, really easy. No complicated map, no fancy templates. In fact, you don't even have to cut teeth. So to get started with this build, I'm using some 3 quarter inch sample bamboo panel boards that Eric Penwell sent me. In fact, Eric, thank you for sending those. He sent 900 pounds of bamboo uh, sample panel boards. So I'll be using bamboo a lot in upcoming builds. So after I cut some squares out on the table saw, I drilled some 5 16 holes in roughly the center of the squares that I'd cut out and then fastened them to the bottom side of my router compass with a 5 16 bolt and then just slowly raising the router bit into the piece and then turning it and then raising it some more and turning it until I went all the way through it to cut out a perfect sphere. I did this on two pieces. Now you want to be careful to keep your fingers well away from that blade. On the third piece, I laid out some rough lines and then kind of penciled in the shape. I wanted it to be rough. I wasn't too worried about it being perfectly symmetrical. I wanted this oblong shape to do a little experiment with here later in the video. After I was done drawing out the shape, I went and cut it out on the bandsaw. Now here's where the gears come in, and this makes it real easy. This is some stepper motor belt that I'd ordered off of eBay, and I found that this stuff because it was three quarter inches wide or just over, and it was cheap. So it was about a dollar and forty cents a foot. And after I got the, the sphere made, I just wrapped it around there to get the distance I needed. And the one thing you want to watch for is when those two ends come together, you want to have this pretty close to the same distance between the teeth as the rest of the teeth around it. So if, you're, if they're a little further apart, a little too close together, you're going to have to do just a touch of sanding to make the come together just real nice. I used Loctite epoxy or uh, like to Loctite um, super glue on the two round ones, and I ended up using epoxy on the oblong one because I ran out, and both worked really well as far as ad adhesion. They helped the, uh, the gear tape on there real well, or the gear strap on real well. So after everything was dried, I just trimmed off the little tiny bit of excess that was left hanging over and set up a little testing device. Now I gotta tell you, I was super impressed with the way these gears ran. Very smooth, very quiet comparatively to wood gears, and I had some very significant RPMs going on these without any trouble at all, and it was still very quiet. Much faster RPMs than what I'm actually showing here in the video. I will definitely be using this style of gear for a lot of upcoming builds. Now here's where that oblong gear came in. This is kind of fun. I uh, cut a slot in the back of my board that I had the gears mounted on, and then put the bolt through and tighten that on. And then I just used a spring on the bolt to hold that in position when um, it was running. That way it would just keep some down pressure on that oblong gear. Went ahead and tested it, and I could not believe how well this ran. It was very impressed. It was, I was very impressed with how this ran, and I will definitely be using this in the future for some kind of reciprocation or reciprocating motion tool that I'll be building at some point down the road. So that's it, the easiest possible way I can think of to make gears for projects at home. So there you have it, really easy to make gears that are really durable, they're quiet and simple to make. You know, they have all kinds of different size gear strap or gear belts like this, timing belts work. Um, there's a lot of different belts out there that will work for this application. You know, this belt I found on eBay and I ended up paying like $1.40 a foot for it. So it was really inexpensive. And a, a little bit of contact cement or even uh, epoxy will work to adhere that on there nice and secure. And uh, you're good to go. So I'm definitely going to be using this in the future. They just run quieter. They, you can get put a lot more load on them without them wearing out. And the math is a lot less complicated. You know, I mean, if I want something that's been half as fast, I just make one disc half as big as the other one. So pretty simple stuff. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We've got a lot of really fun projects coming down the pipe.